Hi everyone, this is Matt from Open Builds. In today's instructional video, we're going to show you how to build the mechanical portion of your mini mill. As you can see, this machine design is stout and strong. It utilizes lead screw driven transmission, so it's very accurate. And along with that, it utilizes all of the Open Builds modular components to create this awesome machine design. This is also a small machine, but extremely powerful. So it makes for a perfect desktop option. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so on this first step, we are going to assemble our wheels. So what I have here is a large Extreme V wheel and a Mini V Extreme wheel. So let's first unload the contents. So this will be the large Extreme V wheel. Inside, you'll see two of our bearings, two precision shims and a nylon hex nut. To assemble the wheel, first simply pop in the bearing to the front face of the wheel, rotate it, Add your precision shim in the middle and close it in with your additional bearing. Just like so. And that completes the assembly for the wheel. Your additional components, your precision shim and nylon hex nut will be used in later steps. So just keep those to the side. And next we'll move on to our mini extreme V wheel. The assembly is identical. The only difference is the size of the components inside the kit. So you'll see mini V precision shims and mini bearings. Same process, we'll pop in our mini V bearing to the front face here. On the back end, add that precision shim and your additional mini V bearing to close this in place, just like so. And the additional components we'll leave to the side for our future steps. So let's go ahead and assemble our additional wheels for each set. So you should have seven additional mini V wheels and seven large extreme wheels. So let's go ahead and finish that assembly and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we are going to assemble our anti-backlash nut block to our X-axis extra large plate. So for our actuator, this will be our gantry plate. And what we need to do first is go ahead and assemble our anti-backlash nut block to the center of this plate. So the first thing to pay attention to is your anti-backlash nut block. And as you can see here, I already have the grub screw attached to the anti-backlash nut block. The only purpose of this is to make adjustments to the anti-backlash nut block if there's wear on this block itself. So as you can see, I'm actually not even touching the back of the Delrin here these blocks already come designed to prevent backlash. So the only reason the scrub screw and thin hex nut is installed to the anti-backlash nut block is when you start to see wear in the system, you can make that adjustment and pull this lip back, which is going to reduce backlash in your system. As you can see, it's not even touching the back of the Delrin here. So just mirror this like I have it set and that way, there's no complications when we're attaching our lead screw to this block because you don't want to add too much tension to the system because you'll have trouble adding the lead screw in the anti-backlash nut block. So once you have your grub screw in place, let's go ahead and turn our attention to our extra large gantry plate. So now as far as reference goes, following along with this video, don't pay attention to the stamp, the etched mark here of open builds. The orientation of the plate is always going to be based around your hole spacing. So we have our large hole set here for our centric spacers. And on the opposite side, we have our smaller holes, which will be for our fixed side of wheels. So that's always what you're gonna pay attention to when changing the orientation of the plate. So what we need to pay attention to is where our anti-backlash nut block is going to be placed. Since the eccentrics always ride on one side and the fixed wheels always ride on another, the anti-backlash nut block needs to be centered in these two holes. That way our lead screw can run through the system. So let's go ahead and grab our M5 20 millimeter screws and run those through each hole on the extra large gantry plate. Flipping the plate around, we'll go ahead and add our three millimeter aluminum spacers to each screw. In addition to that, we'll add our precision shims. Once that's complete, 
Simply place the anti-backlash nut block onto the screws, making sure that the hex side is facing up. And that's how we will attach our screws to the block using our, our two nylon hex nuts. So now that you have that in place, go ahead and take each hex nut. What I like to do is just place them into the hole here. From there, I'm gonna tilt the system to the side, taking my ball driver, I'm gonna tighten this into place. Now, when tightening the anti-backlash nut block down, one thing to pay attention to is if your block is square. Now, you don't want it tilted because the lead screw needs to feed through this anti-backlash nut block. So what we need to do is just back off of each screw. It's about a quarter of a turn. That way you have mobility in your anti-backlash nut block. And once we feed our lead screw through, we will tighten down the anti-backlash nut block. So that completes the assembly to our X-axis extra large gantry plate. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So moving forward to the next step, we are going to assemble our gantry cart for our X-axis. So what we need to gather is our assembly that we have so far with the anti-backlash nut block already attached to the plate, four 27 millimeter screws, two six millimeter aluminum spacers, two six millimeter centric spacers, four precision shims, four nylon hex nuts, and four extreme solid V wheels. So to start this assembly off, let's go ahead and take notice to our plate, making sure that the orientation of the plate is matching what I have here. Once again, paying attention to the hole sizes to differentiate where the orientation of the plate is going to be placed. So the three large holes here are on the left side of my anti-backlash nut block. And then the fixed side, which is the smaller holes, are on the right side. So what we need to do is insert our 27 millimeter screws into each corner hole on each end of the plate. So let's go ahead and take the 27 millimeter screws, insert those onto each one of these holes. From here, what I like to do is let the plate rest on its back. It really just helps with the assembly process, just like so. And then let's add our additional components. So paying attention to the sized holes, once again, because that's going to give you an indication of where your centrics need to be placed and your fixed side needs to be placed. So as you can see on the right side here, the larger holes are evident. You can see that they are slightly larger than our other side. This will be for our centric spacer side. And our centric spacers are right here. So you'll see this lip end, which is inserted into the hole. And this works as a cam. So you can see the offset hole here, which allows for tightening of the wheels. So as you change the position of this eccentric, you'll tighten the wheels down to your V-slot rail. So that's exactly how these eccentrics work. Now the front stamped side of the eccentric is a fully open position. So what I like to do is face these away from the fixed wheels. That way my fully open position can just be slid right onto the V-slot rail. And then from there, I can make my adjustments to tighten it. We'll start with our eccentrics first, making sure that that stamp side is facing to the right. After that, add your precision shims. and then your extreme solid V-wheels. And if you, have an, if you have a situation where the precision shim is lodged in the middle like this, you can always use your ball driver to sift it back into place, just like so. And then from there, you can place it onto the screw. Another way to get that precision shim back in the middle is just to spin the wheel on the screw and generally it'll find its center of gravity just like so. Now let's go ahead and move on to our fixed wheel side. So on this side we'll use our six millimeter aluminum spacers on each screw. Following that our precision shims. In addition to that we'll add our wheels. Following that what I like to do is go ahead and add my nylon hex nuts to each screw, just kind of thread it onto the screw. 
And once again, this really helps with the assembly. Once you have your nylon hex nuts on each wheel, let's go ahead and tilt the plate to the side. Let's tighten down each one of our wheels. Okay, now that we have that complete, going back to our centric spacers, we want to make sure that that six millimeter stamp side is facing away from our fixed wheels. So currently, during the adjustment of tightening these wheels down, they have moved. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is change the position of each one. So just taking my spanner wrench, I'm going to leave those at a fully open position here, just like so. So as you can see, each one of my eccentrics is at the fully open position. That's precisely what you want. So once you've completed that assembly, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we are going to adjust the eccentrics to our 250 millimeter rail that's included in your mini mill kit. So this is going to be our X axis. So go ahead and locate your 250 millimeter rail, your assembly that we have so far, and a spanner wrench. So the first thing we need to go ahead and do is slide our gantry plate onto the 250 millimeter rail, making sure that the eccentrics are on one side and the fixed wheels are on the opposite side. So since our eccentrics are at a fully open position, you'll see that the plate slides on with ease, but you're also going to see extreme wobble in the gantry plate until we make adjustments to our eccentrics. So as you can see, as I'm moving this up and down, that is a lot of play in the gantry plate. And if you were to leave your eccentrics at a fully open position like this, it's all going to translate into the machine. So at that point, you're going to lose all kinds of accuracy. So what we are going to do is make these adjustments to the eccentrics to give us a nice tight lock to the C-beam. So go ahead and grab the spanner wrench. And what I like to do is move my eccentrics in the same direction. So I'm going to rotate these to the right. So as you can see, I've moved that about a quarter of a turn here. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this end. So I'm not to the full quarter turn, but I'm just gonna test that out and see how that feels. And what you can see here is some friction against the rail, which is actually pretty good. This one as well. But if we were to place the C-beam down and check the gantry plate for wobble, you're still gonna see some wobble there. So we need to go ahead and adjust those further. So I'm gonna move these to the full quarter position. All right, and let's test that for wobble. No wobble in the system whatsoever. So that is a quarter of a turn to the eccentrics and that worked out perfect. So what I'm going to do is just test the friction on the wheel. So as you can see, I have some resistance here, but it's not too tight against the rail. So I'm still able to move it without the gantry plate actually trying to pull itself to the right. That's exactly what you want. That's the proper amount of friction on the system. And once again, another test is just to place the C-beam down and just feel for that wobble. There's no wobble in the system whatsoever. So that's precisely what you want. And that is how you adjust your centrics to your V-slot rail. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so moving forward into the next step here, we are going to assemble our black angle corner connectors to our x-axis for the purpose of mounting to our y-axis. So with our x-axis, we have our carriage already tightened down onto the rail. In addition to that, we'll need four black angle corner connectors, eight M5 T-nuts, and four M5 eight millimeter screws. Our tooling for this step, we'll just use our M5 ball driver. Now the first thing we're going to do for the assembly process is go ahead and take our gantry plate off and on our C-beam, making sure that the C-channel is facing away from you, we are going to add two T-nuts here on the bottom track and this is going to be for both sides of the C-beam as well as two T-nuts 
on the back end of the C-beam. So on these outer tracks of the back of the C-beam, we're gonna add two additional T-nuts and that will be for the mating process of the C-beam and our extra large plate on our Y-axis actuator. So let's go ahead and start off by inserting two T-nuts here onto our bottom track. And if you're unfamiliar with the T-nut, make sure that that flange side is facing down into the track, just like so. Go ahead and flip this around. Be careful not to tilt it because those T-nuts will come back out. Once again, make sure it's on the bottom track. And then let's go ahead and flip this to the back end, making sure we have two T-nuts per end of the bottom of the C-beam. Okay, so once we have that complete, what we are going to do is go ahead and attach our black angle corner connectors to each one of these M5 T-nuts. The placement isn't going to stay where we mount it to. We'll readjust it once we have our actuator complete and then our Y-axis actuator complete. So once the assembly connects to one another, we will be able to adjust the position accordingly. So taking our black angle corner connectors, we are going to place them in this orientation with the back end of the black angle corner connector ready to mount to a surface. And from there, we use our eight millimeter screws to mount these into place. So you should see the orientation match what I have here with the C channel facing out. And don't over tighten these because like I said, the position isn't going to stay here. We just want to keep them tight enough to where they're not falling out of the C beam. So let's go ahead and mirror this process on the back end. Once again, make sure that the orientation of the black angle corner connector is as I show you here. And let's mount this into place. So like I said, don't worry about the position of the black angle corner connectors right now. We will change that once we go into the mounting of the X axis to the Y. So now that we have our black angle corner connectors in place, as well as our T-nuts on the bottom of the C-beam, let's go ahead and run our gantry plate back onto the C-beam. And that completes the assembly of our black angle corner connectors to our C-beam. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, moving on to the next step here, we are gonna complete the assembly for our X-axis actuator. So we need to go ahead and gather these parts. What we have here is our assembly that we have so far, our lead screw, which is at 315 millimeters. So make sure that you have the right size lead screw. The additional length is added to this lead screw for our jog knob, which is gonna go on the opposite end of the actuator. So in addition to the lead screw, we have our jog knob, our flexible coupling, our two eight millimeter bearings, two eight millimeter shims, two eight millimeter lock collars, eight M5 20 millimeter screws, two M5 55 millimeter screws, two 40 millimeter aluminum spacers, two C-beam end mounts, and our NEMA 23 motor. Along with that, our tooling, I'm just gonna use a ball driver set. So to go ahead and get started, let's go ahead and grab our 315 millimeter lead screw and I'm going to feed it through the anti-backlash nut block here on our extra large gantry plate. So finding the anti-backlash nut block, I'm gonna rotate the lead screw to the right. You'll feel the lead screw catch the threads in the anti-backlash nut block and just continue to feed that through. Okay, so once you have the lead screw fed through the anti-backlash nut block, we're gonna to add to each end of the lead screw is our additional components here. So we have our lock collar, eight millimeter shim, and our eight millimeter bearing. So first off, let's go ahead and attach our lock collar. This is going to clamp those parts into place. Next, our eight millimeter shim, which on both sides of the shim, you're gonna see a different surface. We have a rounded surface here and a flat surface on the opposite side of the shim. Make sure that the flat surface of the eight millimeter shim is facing your bearing. So it's gonna be facing away from the eight millimeter lock collar and then add the bearing. And just slide these components back because we still need to add our C-beam end mounts to each end of the C-beam. So go ahead and rotate the system around. 
And let's go ahead and add the same parts to the opposite side. First with our lock collar, then our eight millimeter shim, making sure that that flat side is facing us away from the lock collar. And then your eight millimeter bearing. Once again, slide those components in to give us room to mount our C-beam end mounts on the end of the C-beam. So next, let's go ahead and grab our C-beam end mounts, making sure that the recess side here is facing in towards your gantry plate. And you'll see that these holes here will align with the C-beam. So each one of these holes here is tapped to accompany the C-beam end mount. So placing the C-beam end mount onto the C-beam, we then are gonna take the 20 millimeter screws and feed them into each one of these holes. What I like to do is just hand tighten them first and then go ahead and lock them down with the ball driver. Okay, turning the system around, we are gonna follow that same process for this additional side. So once again, go ahead and grab your C-beam end mount, make sure that the recessed side is facing in towards your extra large gantry plate. And then take your 20 millimeter screws and let's fasten them into each one of these holes. Okay, so once we've completed mounting our C-beam end mounts, let's go ahead and take our flexible coupling making sure that we have the right size hole here, which is the eight millimeter bore. The other side is a quarter inch bore, fitting our NEMA 23 motor. So locating that eight millimeter size bore, we need to go ahead and attach that to our lead screw. So locating the coupling screw on the opposite end of the flexible coupling, you'll see the set screw here, which will lock onto the lead screw. And then you'll see your coupling screw here, which is going to squeeze this coupling against the lead screw. What we need to do is tighten that first, and you want to tighten this completely down onto the lead screw for a secure mount. So you should see that that clamp portion of the flexible coupling is completely sealed, and that's exactly what you want. So on the opposite end of the flexible coupling, we are going to tighten down this set screw. Okay, so once we have that complete, let's go ahead and move on to the mounting of our motor. Okay, so next we're going to take our NEMA 23 motor, making sure that we place this in the right orientation. So with this actuator, we wanna make sure that our wires are hanging down, and this is for the purpose of wire management. So just make sure that the wires are facing down when you assemble this, Another thing to pay attention to with the motor is making sure that you've located the flat portion of the motor shaft. This will attach to the set screw on your flexible coupling. Now it's very important that you align this with that set screw and you lock it on the flat portion of the shaft. And this will be for the purpose of just a secure mount for this motor. You don't want it coming loose or slipping. You'll lose steps in the machining process. So let's go ahead and insert that to the flexible coupling. So once you have the flexible coupling attached to the motor shaft, we are going to tighten down the set screw here to the flat portion of that motor shaft. And then rotating the coupling to the opposite side, we're going to tighten down our coupling screw. So now that we have our flexible coupling attached to our NEMA 23 motor, let's go ahead and turn our attention to the 40 millimeter aluminum spacers and our 55 millimeter screws. So taking the screw, we're going to locate the bottom ends of the motor, which has holes here to accept the 55 millimeter screw. So go ahead and run the screws through each bottom hole. and then attach your 40 millimeter aluminum spacers to each one of the screws. And the goal here is to attach our screws to each one of these threaded holes on the C-beam end mount. So you can see I'm taking my 40 millimeter aluminum spacer and like a sleeve, I'm placing it on top of the screw. 
and the additional length will stick out here until I'm ready to mount it to the C-beam end mount. So the same, same thing on the right side here of the motor, just taking the 40 millimeter aluminum spacer and placing it onto the 55 millimeter screw. And from here, I'm going to push the system forward so I can thread in my screws to each one of these threaded holes. So now taking our M5 ball driver, let's go ahead and fasten these screws into place. Okay, so now that we have our motor mounted, let's go ahead and turn our attention to our additional components that we left loose here on the lead screw. So with these additional components, we're simply going to slide the bearing into place and it should snap right into the C-beam end mount. So as you can see here, the bearing is completely inside of the C-beam end mount. That's exactly what you want. So once that's completed, Turn your lock collar to the side to access the set screw. And from there, we're going to press against the bearing and we're going to tighten that set screw against our lead screw. Just like so. So now that we have our lock collar and bearing and eight millimeter shim in place here and everything's tightened down, we're simply going to rotate this system so we can see the other end of our lead screw. Now on this side of the lead screw, we're going to attach our jog knob. So taking the jog knob, you'll see that I have set screws already attached to this jog knob. Now these come with the kit, just make sure to insert those before and it just really helps with the assembly. So on the opposite end here of the actuator, this additional length of the lead screw, we're going to take first our eight millimeter shim, making sure that the rounded side here is facing towards us and place this onto the lead screw and then let's go ahead and slide our jog knob onto the lead screw. And once you have met the eight millimeter shim, go ahead and tighten down those set screws. Okay, so now that we have that tightened down, let's go ahead and move forward. So one of the best ways to find out if you have any play in the lead screw is just simply take two fingers and pull back and forth. As you can see with mine, there's no movement. Now, if you have any movement in the lead screw, then that means you need to readjust your lock collar, make sure to put enough pressure against it and lock it onto the threads of this lead screw. Now, sometimes this can happen where the set screw basically finds a divot in between threads and that's how it slips loose. So you wanna make sure to just rotate it in the right position and then get a nice lock against it. Okay, so before we move on to the next step here, we need to make sure to go ahead and lock our anti-backlash nut block into place. So let's go ahead and tighten down these screws here since we have our lead screw in place. Just going to tighten these down. And as you can see, just moving the jog knob here to look at the gantry cart. And as you can see, we have smooth linear movement here. And this assembly is looking great so far. So that's the x-axis actuator that is complete. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we are going to be assembling our gantry plate for our y-axis. So this is pretty much mirroring the same process we did for the x-axis. The only difference is the components that we're going to add to the actuator itself. So on the C-beam, we'll add additional T-nuts for framing components and additional mounting options. So let's go ahead and start off with our y-axis gantry plate, which is once again, an extra large gantry plate. We'll need an anti-backlash nut block, two three millimeter aluminum spacers, two precision shims, two nylon hex nuts, two M5 20 millimeter screws, and our ball driver. So once again, paying attention to the holes on each end of the plate, making sure that we have our centrics on one side and our fixed wheels on the other. And the way you can tell that is by the size of the holes. As you can see, the larger holes here accompany the eccentric. So this is very important to get the orientation of your anti-backlash nut block correct. So we want the anti-backlash nut block to mount on these two holes. So let's go ahead and run our 20 millimeter screws through each one of these holes. And if you can think of the lead screw running through the plate here, 
That's why the orientation of the anti-backlash nut block has to be in this position. So make sure that you do align that correctly. As far as a visual representation, don't follow the stamped in. It might differ with your plates. So just follow the large and the small holes here. So let's go ahead and rotate this around. Adding first our three millimeter aluminum spacers to each screw and then our precision shims. And then following that, let's add our anti-backlash nut block, making sure that the hex side of the recessed holes is facing up away from the, the bottom of the plate here. So placing the anti-backlash nut block onto our screws, let's go ahead and add our nylon hex nuts next. Okay, so once we have that complete, let's go ahead and tilt the system to the side and tighten it down. And once again, just go ahead and back off of these screws, just a quarter of a turn, and make sure that your anti-backlash nut block is slightly loose. And the purpose of this is so we can get that lead screw to align to the anti-backlash nut block correctly. Once we get the lead screw in place, we will tighten this down. Another thing to pay attention to is the, the grub screw and the thin hex nut that I've attached to the block. The only purpose of this is when the system eventually wears, you can tighten that up and reduce backlash. But for right now, all I've done is inserted it. It's not even touching the back of the Delrin. And I just tied on the thin hex nut. And that's all you have to do for that block. All right, so now that we have that assembly complete, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So moving on to the next step here, we are going to be assembling our large extreme wheels to our Y-axis gantry plate. So let's go ahead and gather these parts. Our assembly that we have so far, four 27 millimeter screws, four precision shims, two six millimeter aluminum spacers, two six millimeter eccentric spacers, four nylon hex nuts, and four extreme solid V wheels. In addition to that, for our tooling, we'll just have our M5 ball driver and spanner wrench. So to get started with this, let's go ahead and take notice to our hole sizes here on each end of the plate. As you can see, the larger hole size here, which will be for our eccentric spacers, and the smaller side will be for our aluminum spacers. So what we need to do is go ahead and insert our 27 millimeter screws into each one of these corners. So let's go ahead and start there. Okay, once that's complete, just roll the system to the back of the plate and let's add our additional components. So we need to pay attention to here is our hole sizes. So here on the left side of my plate, you can see that these holes are smaller than the right side. So this will be for the aluminum spacers. This side will be for our eccentric spacers. So taking the eccentric spacer, once again, I'll give you a brief overview of how the eccentric works. We have the six millimeter stamped in here which indicates a fully open position for this eccentric. Since it has an offset center, this is for the purpose of tightening your wheels to your rail. So as I rotate this around, you'll see that the center of this hole moves in. So if you can imagine a wheel on this eccentric, it's going to tighten to the V slot. So that's the purpose of the eccentric spacer. And what we need to do is make sure that that stamped end is facing away from our fixed wheels. So I'm going to align it just like that on this right side. And following that are precision shims on each one of the screws. And then our extreme wheels. And then on the left side here, let's go ahead and add our six millimeter aluminum spacers and our precision shims. And following that are extreme wheels. Once again, if you have any issues with that precision shim in the middle, you can either use your ball driver to sift it around, or you can spin it on the screw to find the center of gravity like so. Okay, so let's go ahead and thread on our nylon hex nuts next. Okay, so once we have that complete, let's go ahead and turn the system to the side and tighten those wheels down. Okay, so once we have the wheels tightened down, once again, we wanna make sure that our eccentrics are in a fully open position. So as you can see, we want the uh, six millimeter stamped end facing away from those uh, aluminum spacers. So let's go ahead and make that adjustment real quick. Okay, that one looks good. And let's adjust this one. Perfect. All right, so now that we're done with that assembly, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. 
So on this next step, we are going to adjust our y-axis gantry plate to our y-axis linear rail here. So as you can see, we have our C-beam, which is measured at 390 millimeters. So let's go ahead and locate our C-beam and of course our assembly that we have so far. So taking our gantry plate, we are going to make sure that our centric side, which is the large hole spacing here, and our fixed side are on the opposite ends of each other. So taking the C-beam here, I'm going to place the wheels onto the front tracks and it should slide on rather easy. And once again, we wanna make that adjustment to our centrics. So taking a look at the plate and testing it for any type of wobble, we wanna make sure that we eliminate any type of play in this gantry plate. So let's go ahead and make those adjustments to the eccentrics. So on the eccentric side, you'll see that we're at a fully open position currently. What we need to do is go ahead and make adjustments to the eccentrics to make sure that we have enough friction on the rail. As you can see, this actually isn't too bad so far at an open position, but we need to go ahead and tighten that down slightly. So what we're gonna do is just go ahead and adjust our wheels in the same direction. So I'm turning these to the right. and get a feel for how much friction is on the system. So as you can see right now, I'm able to spin the wheel. I can tell that it's touching the rail, but the plate isn't pulling off of the C-beam. So that actually feels pretty good. And this is a minor adjustment that I've made so far. And that actually feels really good. Now, if you have any type of wobble in the plate, so let's go ahead and set this down. So I still feel a little wobble in the plate. And if you feel that, that's that's no good. So we wanna go ahead and adjust those eccentrics a little bit more. So once again, turning to the right towards a quarter position, we're not gonna reach the full quarter position yet. So I wanna make small adjustments here. All right, now I'm starting to feel some preload on there. That is looking good. So let me go ahead and test that. So holding the plate firmly, go ahead and test that for any type of wobble. And that actually feels really good. So that was a really simple adjustment right there. And that gives you smooth linear movement. So now that we have our eccentrics adjusted, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we are going to add our T-nuts to our Y-axis C-beam. So as you can see, I've already taken off my gantry plate here just to give me access to all the uh, slots that I need to insert the T-nuts into. So what we need is our C-beam and 12 M5 T-nuts. So in this step, it's pretty simple actually. We're just gonna insert two T-nuts on these top two tracks here. And that's for our cast corner brackets. So it'll be part of our frame assembly. Let's go ahead and insert those T-nuts now. And then, on the side of the C-beam here, on the front track, we will insert three T-nuts. Once again, make sure that that flange side is facing inside the track. And we'll mirror this on the opposite side. So once again, three more T-nuts on this top track. And then on the bottom track, we are going to insert two more T-nuts on both sides. And this is for the purpose of our feet. We can mount our mini mill to any type of surface. Let's go ahead and insert two T-nuts here on the bottom, bottom track. And then once again, on this opposite side. Okay, so once we have that complete, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we are going to assemble our y-axis actuator in full. So what we need to gather is our assembly that we have so far, our 455 millimeter lead screw, which is the longest lead screw out of the three. We also have our NEMA 23 motor, our jog knob, two eight millimeter lock collars, three eight millimeter shims, two eight millimeter bearings, two M5 55 millimeter screws, two 40 millimeter aluminum spacers, two C-beam end mounts, our flexible coupling, and eight M5 20 millimeter screws. So to get started with the assembly first, let's go ahead and insert our lead screw. 
So this process is gonna be very similar to the x-axis. What we need to do first is find that anti-backlash nut block, and let's go ahead and thread the lead screw through. So I'm just rotating the lead screw to the right here, and I'm gonna feed it all the way through the anti-backlash nut block until I see the lead screw protruding out to the other side here. Okay, so once we have the lead screw far enough through the anti-backlash nut block, what we are going to do then is go ahead and add our additional components to the lead screw. So what we need is our lock collar first. Go ahead and slide that on to this end of the lead screw. Add your eight millimeter shim making sure that the flat side of the shim is facing away from the lock collar towards your bearing. And go ahead and add your eight millimeter bearing. Now flipping the system around, remember to be careful we have those T-nuts in place. And the same thing on this side, lock collar, eight millimeter shim, and our eight millimeter bearing. So now let's go ahead and attach our C-beam end mounts to each end of the C-beam, making sure that the recessed hole here is facing inward towards the gantry plate. And from there, we'll add our M5 20 millimeter screws to each one of these holes. Okay, so once we have those screws tightened down, what I'm going to do next is set this end of the lead screw up so we can attach the jog knob. So you want a decent amount of length of the lead screw coming out on both ends. So that looks about right there. What we're gonna do next is go ahead and attach our eight millimeter shim to the end of this lead screw and make sure that that flat side is facing the C-beam end mount. And go ahead and take your jog knob as you can see, I've already inserted my set screws and place that onto the lead screw. Uh, rotating that around, I'm going to go ahead and lock those set screws into place. So once we've completed that tightening process of the jog knob, let's go ahead and move on to tightening down these additional components. So here on this end of our C-beam, we need to go ahead and place that bearing into the recessed hole of the C-beam end mount. And as you can see, I'm not moving my jog knob back anymore. I want the additional length that's on the opposite end of the C-beam to remain the same. So that being said, I'm making sure that the only force that I'm putting on the system is on that lock collar and bearing. I'll make sure this is tight. So let's go ahead and tighten that down. So next, let's go ahead and take our C-beam end mount. Once again, making sure that recess side is facing towards the gantry plate and let's place it onto this side of the actuator. And taking our 20 millimeter screws, let's go ahead and hand tighten these into the holes first and then tighten down with our ball driver. Okay, so now that we have those tightened down, let's go ahead and move on to the mounting of our motor. So once again, taking the NEMA 23 motor, let's make sure that our wires are facing down so as you can see, the system with the gantry plate is going to be facing upright towards the top of the machine. So we just wanna make sure that those wires are facing down so we can manage our wires. So once again, paying attention to the holes here on the end of the motor, we're gonna insert our 55 millimeter screws and our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers and attach that to our C-beam end mount. But one thing I like to do before we attach it to the C-beam end mount is attach that flexible coupling. So we're gonna locate that flat part of the motor shaft here and make sure that we locate the quarter inch bore of our flexible coupling. And let's go ahead and attach that to the motor. So making sure that the set screw is aligned here to the flat part of the motor shaft. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this down and rotating that around. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten down the clamping portion of the pulley. And you really wanna make sure you get a tight lock there and that looks good. Now for the clamping portion that attaches to the lead screw, you wanna make sure that that's completely sealed. So you see the gap here, we wanna make sure that that's gonna be completely sealed. So we wanna tighten that down before we tighten down our set screw. 
So as you can see here, I have my coupling slit onto the lead screw. Now I haven't tightened anything down yet because we need to insert our 55 millimeter screws first with our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers. And we're going to attach them to each one of these bottom holes here. So let's go ahead and insert those first. Okay, so once those 55 millimeter screws are tightened down to the C-beam end mount, let's go ahead and tighten down our clamp. And what we want to do here with the clamp is we want this to be completely sealed. So as I'm clamping this down, I'll show you the end result. But it's very important to get that tight lock against your lead screw. Otherwise, this will come loose. I want to put a little force on there. You don't want to strip the screw, but you just want that to be touching. So as you can see, that's touching there, there's no gap. So rotating this around, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten down my set screw. And that's exactly what you should see. So now let's go ahead and move on to our additional components on the lead screw. So taking the additional components here, let's go ahead and slide them down into the recessed hole of the C-beam end mount. Once again, you want that bearing to fit into the C-beam end mount and rotating the lock collar around here and putting enough force to keep it still. I want to go ahead and lock that into place. So what we are looking for here in the lead screw is any type of play. Now, if you have any type of motion, you see how I'm pulling back and forth and I'm not getting any movement out of that whatsoever. The only movement is my fingers slipping on the threads. That's precisely what you want. And this is for accuracy. So if you had any play in your lead screw, you're going to need to reevaluate how tight your lock collars are to your bearings. So just make sure that there's no play here in the system whatsoever, and that looks good. Okay, so the last thing we need to do before this assembly is complete is just go ahead and tighten down our anti-backlash nut block. So these two screws here should be loose. Let's go ahead and tighten those down completely. You don't want to over-tighten this, guys. Just a nice, tight feel. So as you can see now, this is our finished Y-axis actuator and it is looking sharp. As you can see, you can move around that jog knob for manual movement here on the axis. That's looking really good so far. Great job, guys. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're going to be assembling our feet to our Y-axis actuator. So we need to gather as our assembly that we have so far, four of our rubber feet, four M5 12 millimeter screws, four M5 hex nuts, four cast corner connectors, and four M5 10 millimeter screws. So first let's take our rubber feet and one of our nylon hex nuts here and just insert that into the top portion of the rubber foot. As you can see, it should insert just like so. And let's do that for the additional three. Once you have that complete, go ahead and grab one of your M5 12 millimeter screws and one of your cast corner connectors. And what we are going to do is insert the screw into the rubber foot on the back end and tie it into that nylon hex nut. Just go ahead and grab your ball driver and thread that in. You'll notice that the screw penetrates the rubber rather easily. so. Just kind of screw it into place. And that should be the end result. So let's go ahead and do that with our additional three wheels. So what we're going to do next is go ahead and flip your actuator to the side. And you'll see our two T-nuts here on the bottom track. We're gonna use those to mount these cast corners on each side. So starting here on the right side, I'm going to take one of my cast corners, one of the 10 millimeter screws, and thread that into place. What I like to do is just move it all the way to the C-beam end mount, and then tighten that down, just like so. And we'll follow that same process for our additional three cast corners. So 
So once you have the feet attached, go ahead and flip the actuator over. And as you can see now, we have feet on our Y-axis actuators. This will keep this unit stable, which is a really nice addition. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we are going to be attaching our waste board to our X-axis. And the reason for doing this before we assemble our X to Y is so we can have access to the waste board from underneath our X-axis. So what we need to go ahead and gather is our MDF cutout, wood screws. So what we first need to do is go ahead and take the X-axis and flip it over and place it on top of the waste board. So once you have your x-axis on top of the waste board. We are going to use these three holes on each end of the x-axis to mount our wood screws. So make sure that your waste board is square to your plate and taking one of the wood screws and your power drill, we are going to mount this into place. So that's one and let's do the additional two. Go ahead and rotate your x-axis to the other side. And let's go ahead and continue by mounting these three additional screws to these three holes. So once we have the assembly complete, as you can see, you have a nice sturdy mount, for your extra large plate, and that's perfect for your waste board. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we will be assembling our X to Y. So what we need to gather is our two assemblies that we have so far, four M5 eight millimeter screws, and four M5 12 millimeter screws. In addition to that, I have my M5 ball driver, a Sharpie, you want a color that will stand out with the black C-beam, and a tape measure. Now to start this assembly off, first we need to find the midpoint on our 250 millimeter X-axis. So let's go ahead and start there. So what we need to do is go ahead and measure out 125 millimeters from the end of the C-beam, so that's not including the C-beam end mount, to the middle of the C-beam. So it's 125 millimeters. So if you go ahead and take your tape measure out. So as you can see, I have mine aligned with the 125 mark. So we're going to complete this on both sides. And that's to make sure that we have the center point measured out for this X axis. So once you have that complete for both sides of the C-beam, let's go ahead and move forward. Okay, so moving back here to our assemblies. Now what we need to do is Take our X axis and place it right on top of the Y. And what's very important is to make sure that the orientation matches mine. So you should see your motor over here to the left side. And this is for the purpose of having that workspace available on the left side of your machine. So let's go ahead and insert our eight millimeter screws into our black angle corner connectors and start that mounting process to our extra large plate. So here on the black angle corner connectors, what we need to do is just position these to where they're aligned with the threaded holes on our extra large plate. So you'll see these threaded holes here. That's where the black angle corner connectors need to be positioned to. So I just left these screws here loose against the rail. That way I can move these freely. Now another thing that we need to make sure to do is position our X axis in that midpoint that we had marked out. So all you have to do is just adjust the position here with the rail and center that. So now taking my eight millimeter screws, I'm gonna drop these into place here. So after inserting the screws, I'm now going to adjust the position of my gantry plate so I can access each screw. So I'm just using the flexible coupling here to adjust the position. And now that that one black angle corner connector is open, I'm going to tighten that one first. Okay, moving on to the left black angle corner connector here. I'm going to go ahead and move my gantry out of the way once again. Okay, once that's open, let's go ahead and tighten this one down as well. Okay, so now that we have our black angle corner connectors in position, once again, just make sure you have those aligned to the center point of your X axis. So I'm making that adjustment now. And once that's complete, I'm going to tighten down each one of these screws here to the C-beam. So now that we have these black angle corner connectors tightened down, let's go ahead and rotate our system and do the same thing on the other side. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the position here of my black angle corner connectors, making sure that they are aligned to the holes here on the extra large plate. And let's go ahead and drop our eight millimeter screws in. And from there, I'm gonna work on the right one first. And then adjusting my gantry plate. And let's tighten down this eight millimeter screw. Okay, so since we aligned our black angle corner connectors on the other side, you should find that these are also in line with your center point. So we'll go ahead and tighten those down. So now before we flip the machine around so we can tighten our additional screws to the bottom here to our T-nuts, what we need to go ahead and do is crack loose our eight millimeter screws on each side of our X axis. And that way we can have free movement here on the gantry so we can square up our system. So let's go ahead and start there. Just a quarter of a turn is all that's necessary. And I'll rotate the machine and do the same on the other side. Once I loosen those screws, you'll see you have movement here on the X axis. That's precisely what we want. So now let's go ahead and flip the machine over so we can access those additional T-nuts. So here on the bottom of our assembly, you'll see two of our T-nuts per track that we have placed in preemptive for this assembly. So let's go ahead and slide two T-nuts down. So you see I just flip these to the other end because they are going to be mounting to each one of these holes on our extra large plate. So adjusting the position here of my T-nuts, I'm going to align them with the holes of the extra large plate. And you'll see since we can move this freely, we can really square up our machine by making sure that those T-nuts are in the right position in the track. So now let's go ahead and take our 12 millimeter screws and tighten it down to the T-nut. Once again, I'm gonna sift this one down and tighten that down with my 12 millimeter screw. Okay, so let's move on to the next side. So once again, let's go ahead and align these T-nuts with the holes on the extra large plate. And let's tighten it down with our 12 millimeter screws. Okay, so now that we have that complete, let's go ahead and flip our system back around. Now that we have our machine turned back around, let's go ahead and tighten down our screws here to the black angle corner connectors. Okay, so now that we have our black angle corner connectors attached to our extra large plate here, we have our X-axis mounted from not only the corner connectors, but it, the T-nuts as well on the bottom end. So this is a nice secure mount here with our XY table, and this is really looking exceptional, guys. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So moving forward on to the next step here, we are going to be assembling our Z-axis gantry plate. So what I have here is a double wide gantry plate, and we also need eight mini V extreme wheels, four centric spacers, four six millimeter aluminum spacers, eight mini V precision shims, 12 nylon hex nuts, two three millimeter aluminum spacers, anti-backlash nut block, two 20 millimeter screws, and eight 25 millimeter screws. Along with that, my tooling, I'm gonna to use M5 ball driver and our spanner wrench. So to get started, first, let's take a look at our double wide gantry plate making sure that the orientation of the plate is correct for the mounting of our anti-backlash nut block. Since we have our eccentric spacers on the left side, which you can see the larger spaced holes here are for the eccentrics, we need to place our anti-backlash nut block and these two top holes here. So let's go ahead and insert our 20 millimeter screws into each one of these holes. From there, just keeping two fingers on the screws, I'm going to add my three millimeter aluminum spacers to each screw. From there, let's go ahead and add the anti-backlash nut block, making sure that the hex side is facing away from the plate. Go ahead and place that on top. From there, let's add two of our nylon hex nuts. Once you have those in place, simply rotate the plate around and let's tighten the system down. Once you have your screws tightened down, just go ahead and back off the anti-backlash nut block by a quarter of a turn. 
We want to make sure that we can get our lead screw to seat properly to the anti-backlash nut block. In addition to that, you'll see that I've once again put in the grub screw with the thin hex nut. And you can see that I'm just kissing the back end of the Delrin here. And that's all you need to do for that adjustment on the anti-backlash nut block. So now that we have that complete, let's go ahead and move on to the wheel assembly. So once again, paying attention to the holes here, as you can see our smaller set holes here are for the aluminum spacers and the larger set is for the eccentric spacers. So let's go ahead and insert our 25 millimeter screws into each one of these holes. Once that's complete, just rotate the plate to its back. And this really helps the assembly process. So we don't have to worry about our screws wiggling loose while we're trying to stack on our additional components. So first let's focus on the eccentric side of the plate. As you can see, the larger holes here are to accompany the eccentric. So let's go ahead and grab one of our eccentric spacers here and make sure your six millimeter stamped end is facing in towards your aluminum spacers on this configuration. The reason for doing so is because these wheels will ride on the inside of the track of the C-beam. So the fully open position needs to be facing towards the aluminum spacer side. So with that being said, let's go ahead and place our eccentrics on each screw. Once that's complete, let's add our precision shims to each screw. And from there, let's add our Mini V Extreme wheels. And that completes the eccentric side. So let's go ahead and move on to the aluminum spacer side. Taking your six millimeter aluminum spacer, let's add those to each screw. And following that, our precision shims. And then our extreme wheels. Now from here, what I like to do is just go ahead and thread on the nylon hex nuts for ease of assembly. Okay, so once you have the nylon hex nuts in place, let's go ahead and turn the system to the side and let's tighten down each one of these screws. Okay, so once you have the wheels tightened down, let's go ahead and make sure that our eccentrics are facing in the right direction. As you can see, they will turn when you're tightening down the system. So let's just go ahead and rotate those, making sure that they're facing the aluminum spacers. Okay, so once you have all the eccentrics in the right direction, that completes this assembly. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we are going to be adjusting the eccentrics for our Z gantry plate here. So what I've gathered is my 250 millimeter C-beam, which will be for our Z-axis, as well as my uh, gantry assembly that we have so far. And in addition to that, all you will need is a spanner wrench for the tooling. So what we need to do is go ahead and make the adjustments to our centric so we have enough preload for this system. So first, let's go ahead and run the plate through our C-beam. As you can see, it slides in with ease, but you're going to have this wobbly motion on the gantry plate. So that's no good. We need to go ahead and make those adjustments to the eccentrics. So on the eccentric side, since we have them at a fully open position, we're gonna turn these to the right and make a quarter of a turn adjustment. So make that same adjustment to all of your wheels. And let's give that a shot. Okay, that's a little better, but we still need some more tension on those wheels. So let's go ahead and adjust that again. Once again, making the rotation here to the right. Okay, so I've got some preload on this system. I can feel it once it entered in that track. And that actually feels really good. So a good way to check this on each side, I wanna make sure that the friction of the wheels is sufficient for the rail. So bringing in the system here, I can, I can feel the preload on the first set of wheels. And then as it reaches the second, you can feel preload. And you can also test that by checking the friction of the wheel by just using your index finger and making sure that the wheels are touching the rails. And you don't wanna over tighten the system because it can cause wear on the wheels. So that's the last thing we're trying to do, just finding that nice median here. And the same for the back end, I can feel that as well. So we can also check it on this end. 
And on this back end, I actually need to make a, a couple more adjustments to the eccentrics here. So the term preload basically means the tension that's on the rail. And as you can see here, how the wheels kind of resist the entry to the rail, it's exactly what you want. You want that tension on this rail. So once you add the proper amount of preload, you should feel that tight lock against the wheels. So once you have the eccentrics adjusted, you should see smooth linear movement here with your gantry plate and you shouldn't have any wobble, so that's a good test. As you can see, there's no wobble on this gantry plate whatsoever. I have the right amount of tension on the wheels. That looks excellent. Now, if you do have wobble or any type of issue with the wheel tension, you need to go ahead and make those adjustments to the eccentrics until you fine tune it. Okay, so that looks good. And let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we are going to be adding some T-nuts here to our Z-axis for our frame assembly as well as assembling our router spindle mount to our Z-axis gantry plate. So let's go ahead and gather these parts here, four M5 10 millimeter screws, two black angle corner connectors, our router spindle mount, and of course our Z-axis assembly that we have so far. So the only tooling that you'll need is your M5 ball driver. So to get started here, let's go ahead and pay attention to our router spindle mount. You'll see in the kit that it comes with the back piece, front piece, and two 15 millimeter screws. I've already put the 15 millimeter screws into the router spindle. Let's just go ahead and do that first. Pretty simple process, just tighten those into the holes. So now that we have our router spindle mount assembled, let's go ahead and take notice to our black angle corner connectors. So on the outer holes of the router spindle mount, we will attach our black angle corner connectors with our 10 millimeter screws. So let's go ahead and start there first. So taking my black angle corner connectors, I'm going to place them on each outer hole here, taking one of the 10 millimeter screws, I'm then going to attach it to my router spindle mount. And one thing to pay attention to is you wanna make sure that your black angle corner connector is square against the back end of your router spindle mount. So that looks good. So let's go ahead and move on to the left side here. So go ahead and place the black angle corner connector and then add your M5 10 millimeter screw. So now that we have our black angle corner connectors assembled to our router spindle mount, let's go ahead and move on to the process of mounting it to our Z-axis gantry plate. So here at the bottom end of the Z-axis gantry plate, you'll see two threaded holes here on the sides. This is where our black angle corner connectors will mount. So let's go ahead and position our router spindle to where we can access those holes. So now that our router spindle mount is in position, let's go ahead and take our M5 10 millimeter screws and thread them into each one of the holes. So once we have those screws tightened down, that completes the assembly for our router spindle mount. So now that we have our router spindle mount assembled to our Z gantry, let's go ahead and move on to our T-nuts and where we are going to place them. So on these top two tracks of the C-beam, we are going to place a total of three T-nuts per side. So let's go ahead and take our T-nuts, making sure that the flange side is facing in, and let's place three on these top tracks here. So I'm just gonna turn the system to the side. And as you can see, I have three T-nuts on the top. This is mirrored on the other side. Let's go ahead and add four T-nuts on this bottom track here. So we have a total of four on the bottom track, three on the top. Now let's go ahead and flip this over and add four T-nuts on the bottom track here on this side. Okay, so now that we have our T-nuts in place here on the side tracks, let's go ahead and rotate our axis to the back here, where we are going to add two more T-nuts, one in each side track here. So let's go ahead and insert those T-nuts. And this is all for the purpose of our frame assembly. So we just wanna go ahead and place our T-nuts preemptive to the attachment of our frame. So that looks good. Go ahead and rotate this back around. Just be careful you don't lose any T-nuts. All right, so that completes this step. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. 
So moving on to the next step here, we are gonna finish up the assembly for our Z-axis actuator. So what we have here is our Z-axis assembly that we have so far, a 290 millimeter lead screw, eight M5 20 millimeter screws, two eight millimeter bearings, two eight millimeter shims, two eight millimeter lock collars, our flexible coupling, two 40 millimeter aluminum spacers, two 55 millimeter screws, our NEMA 23 motor, two C beam end mounts, and of course our tooling, I have my ball driver set here. So let's go ahead and get started. So first taking the lead screw, let's go ahead and run it through our anti-backlash nut block here on the Z axis. So once you find the block, just rotate the lead screw to the right and feed it through until you see it come out on the other side. So now that we have our lead screw in place, one thing to pay attention to is the placement of your router spindle mount. Since the router spindle mount is on the bottom of the Z-axis gantry, we need to make sure that our motor is on the top of this actuator. So that being said, let's go ahead and add our additional components to the lead screw. First, starting with our eight millimeter lock collar, make sure that your set screws are inside the lock collar. Then add your eight millimeter shim making sure that the flat side is facing away from the lock collar towards the bearing. And then add your eight millimeter bearing. So rotating the system around, I'm going to add my additional components on this side. Make sure to be careful of those T-nuts. We don't want those falling out. Once again, add the lock collar, eight millimeter shim and your bearing. So now that we have our components in place, let's go ahead and grab one of our C-beam end mounts, making sure that the recessed side is facing your gantry plate, and go ahead and place that onto the end of the C-beam. And let's attach our 20 millimeter screws to each one of these holes. Once you have your screws in place, Go ahead and grab your M5 ball driver and tighten these screws down. Okay, so rotating this system around. Once again, be careful of those T-nuts. Let's go ahead and add our additional C-beam end mount to this end of the C-beam, making sure that recessed side is facing in towards your gantry plate. So paying attention to the bottom portion here of our actuator, we need to make sure that this lead screw is flush with our C-beam end mount. Since this axis won't receive a jog knob, there's no need for an additional length of lead screw to be sticking out past the C-beam end mount. The lead screw length is designed to be in position with the C-beam end mount. So with that being said, just go ahead and push that into the C-beam end mount to where it's flush. And let's go ahead and tighten down our additional components. So taking our additional components, we need to slide the bearing inside of the C-beam end mount. You should hear it lock into place. And once you have it locked into place, press firmly against your lock collar here, and then tighten it down with your ball driver. So now rotating the Z-axis around here so we can access the additional length of our lead screw, this will be attaching to our flexible coupling and then to our motor. So let's go ahead and attach our flexible coupling to this lead screw. So taking the flexible coupling, make sure to locate the eight millimeter bore. You have a quarter inch bore on the other side that will attach to the motor shaft. We're looking for that larger diameter here to attach to our lead screw. So go ahead and place that onto the lead screw, making sure that you have room in between your coupling and your C-beam end mount. You don't wanna cause a rubbing motion on this coupling. So first, what we need to do is go ahead and tighten down our coupling screw against that lead screw. So holding it into place here, once I found my position, I'm going to tighten this down. So once you've tightened down your coupling clamp, you should see no space in between the metal here. So as you can see, mine is completely sealed here. So that's a nice clean lock to that lead screw. So now rotating this around, you'll see a set screw on the other end. 
So let's go ahead and tighten that down as well. So now turning our attention to our NEMA 23 motor, we need to make sure that the motor wire is hanging down. And this is for the purpose of wire management. So the motor will sit just like so. So in addition to that, let's go ahead and take our 55 millimeter screws and run them through each hole of the motor here. In addition to that, we'll add our 40 millimeter spacers as a sleeve to each 55 millimeter screw. From there, we will attach the motor to the C-beam end mount on the threaded holes at the bottom of the plate. So taking my ball driver, I'm going to thread in each screw to the holes on the C-beam end mount. Once you have your 55 millimeter screws in place, we are then going to rotate the motor shaft to find the flat portion, which will lock to your set screw on your coupling. So as you can see, the flat portion of the motor shaft is visible. From there, I will tighten down the set screw. Once the set screw is in position, rotate the coupling to find the coupling screw, and we will then tighten down the coupling screw. Another thing to be mindful of is the 55 millimeter screws. You wanna make sure that they are mounted completely to that C-beam end mount. So what I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and make sure that they are completely tight. Okay, those feel good. So let's go ahead and move forward. So now turning our attention to the components on the top of the lead screw. We need to lock those into place. Once again, taking the bearing and making sure it slides into place to the C-beam end mount and holding firmly onto the lock collar, let's tighten that down. Double check your lead screw for any type of loose motion. That looks good. We have a firm lock on the system. The last thing that we need to go ahead and do is tighten down our two screws to our anti-backlash nut block. So go ahead and tighten down each one of these screws. Remember, don't over tighten these screws. You can deform the Delrin. Okay, perfect. So now that our assembly is complete, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So moving on to the next step here, we are going to be assembling our frame components to our Z-axis. So let's go ahead and get our Z-axis actuator assembly and two 90 degree joining plates, two three hole joining plates, two cast corner connectors, and 12 screws. So taking the Z-axis assembly, let's go ahead and turn it to its side giving us access to our T-nuts on the right side of the actuator. Let's go ahead and push two T-nuts down to this end where our C-beam end mount is placed. And let's take one of our three hole joining plates, aligning it to the two M5 T-nuts. Let's go ahead and fasten it down with our M5 10 millimeter screws. So as you can see here, I have my three hole joining plate completely aligned with the C-beam end mount. So just make sure that you have it aligned with the C-beam end mount, and that way we have a nice secure frame assembly. So turning our attention to these three M5 T-nuts, let's go ahead and grab one of our 90 degree joining plates and align each T-nut to the holes on the 90 degree joining plate. The position it will be sitting is as I display here. So taking the 90 degree joining plate You'll see that my M5 T-nuts are not aligned currently, so I'm just using my ball driver to sift them into place. Once you have the T-nuts in place, fasten it down with your 10 millimeter screws. Now that we have this secured in place, back off of each one of the screws, because this position will change for our 90 degree joining plate. So to keep it from moving around, we'll just go ahead and fasten down the middle screw. And that way it's simple to make the adjustment for the position. So now that we have our two framing components installed to our Z-axis, let's go ahead and rotate the machine. And we are going to do the same process to this left side.
Okay, so now that we have our additional frame components in place, what we are going to do now is locate our T-nuts on the back of the Z-axis. And let's go ahead and add our cast corner connectors. So taking our cast corner connector and one of our eight millimeter screws, let's go ahead and mount this into place. And what I'm doing here is just adjusting the position here, bring it upright, and then we'll tighten it down. That way we have room to work when mounting this to our additional components. So let's go ahead and do the same thing with the other side. Okay, so now that we have our framing components in place, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we are going to be assembling our handles to our Z-axis using our two M5 T-nuts here. So we'll need four 10 millimeter screws and our two handles. So to start this off, go ahead and grab one of your handles and let's go ahead and sift these T-nuts into position here. And grab one of your M5 10 millimeter screws and let's mount this into position. And same for the top side of the handle. Okay, so once you have your screws tightened down to your T-nuts, let's go ahead and adjust the position of the handle. So loosening each one of these screws, we are going to slide the handle down to the top of the joining plate. And let's mount that into position. Okay, so once that's in position, let's go ahead and rotate and let's repeat the same process on this side. Once again, sliding it down to that three hole joining plate and then let's tighten it into position. Okay, so now that we have our handles in place, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, moving on to the next step here, we are going to be assembling our smallest C-beam to the back end of our frame components here. So let's go ahead and gather our Z-axis actuator, our smallest C-beam, six M5 10 millimeter screws, and six M5 T-nuts. So to get started here, I'm gonna go ahead and tilt the system to its side. And taking the small piece of C-beam here, we're going to run it in between our framing components. And the goal here is to align the plate to the bottom of the C-beam. So it should be right before your C-beam end mount. So just cinch it into place. And this is what you should see. So now that we have our C-beam in place, let's go ahead and take our M5 T-nuts and we are going to slide in two, one here, one on the second track, and then one right here on this end to attach to our three hole joining plate. So go ahead and take one of your 10 millimeter screws and we will mount this one into place first. Okay, so once you have that one in place, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate the system to the side here so we can find the position of our additional T-nuts for our 90 degree joining plate. So adjusting my T-nuts to match the holes here of the 90 degree joining plate, then adding my 10 millimeter screws to each hole here. And let's go ahead and match the same process on the next side. So once again, sliding two T-nuts into this track here and one T-nut on this track. And let's go ahead and mount those into position. So next we are going to loosen these screws here and adjust the position of our 90 degree joining plate. So bringing it down here to our three hole joining plate and then just tightening down the one screw. This position will not remain here. We will eventually adjust this to the top portion of the C-beam. So let's go ahead and do the same process for the other side. Okay, so now that we have our 90 degree joining plates in place here, Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we are going to be attaching our self-tapping screws to our cast corners 
that are behind the z-axis. So let's just gather two self-tapping screws, our power drill. Let's go ahead and rotate our z-axis to an upright position and we will loosen each one of these cast corners and just kind of let them fall into place here and align it to the holes here on the end of the C-beam and then tighten those screws into place. Now taking the power drill and one of your self-tapping screws, let's go ahead and drill in to the top of the C-beam. And our additional. And that's a nice tight lock against this frame. As you can see, it's really starting to look rigid. This frame isn't going anywhere. So now that we have our cast corners in place, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So before we complete this step, let's go ahead and loosen these screws here. Let's bring our 90 degree joining plate up to its position. So what we are trying to accomplish here is we want to bring this edge to the edge of the C-beam here. So once you have that aligned, go ahead and tighten this down. Okay, flip the assembly around and let's do the same thing on this side. Okay, so now that you have the 90 degree joining plates tightened down to the frame, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so in this next step, we are going to be assembling more frame components to our 250 millimeter C-beam that is going to extend our Z-axis to our XY assembly. So go ahead and grab your 250 millimeter C-beam, two three hole joining plates, four cast corner connectors, 12 M5 10 millimeter screws, four M5 8 millimeter screws, 16 M5 T-nuts, four self-tapping screws, 90 degree joining plates. So along with that, I'm gonna use my power drill and M5 ball driver for this assembly. Okay, so to start this assembly off, first we're gonna go ahead and grab our three hole joining plates and aligning them to each corner of the C-beam, we are going to use self-tapping screws to mount these into place. So go ahead and grab your self-tapping screws, align them into each one of these holes and placing the C-beam back down, I'm going to use my power drill and drill these into place. Okay, so once you have the one in place, let's go ahead and do our second. Making sure that your three hole joining plate is oriented just like I have it here. So you wanna make sure that the one hole spacing is reaching out and this is part of the framing assembly. So make sure that it does look exactly like I show you here and let's go ahead and do our second. So once you have your three hole joining plates in place, let's go ahead and move forward. So next we are going to be inserting T-nuts into this track here on the C-beam. So as you can see, the C-channel is facing away and we have the flat surface of the C-beam here. So this channel here is where we are going to insert our T-nuts. So let's go ahead and insert a total of five T-nuts here. Once again, making sure that the flange side is facing down. So making adjustments to our T-nuts here, what I'm doing is adjusting these three T-nuts for the mounting of our 90 degree joining plate. So let's go ahead and bring in our 90 degree joining plate, making sure that we have the right orientation on the joining plate. So since the top of our 250 C-beam is where the three hole joining plate is. We want to align our 90 degree joining plate just like so. So you should see the slant facing away from the three hole joining plates. Once that's complete, go ahead and attach your 10 millimeter screws to your T-nuts. And once you have that in position, just go ahead and tighten down the middle screw because this position will change for the 90 degree joining plate. So next for our last two T-nuts down here, let's go ahead and take additional 90 degree joining plate and align it just like so. So you should see the slanted edge of the 90 degree joining plate facing the top 90 degree joining plate. So once you have the 90 degree joining plate in the right orientation, go ahead and mount 
your 10 millimeter screws into the T-nuts. Now, the bottom hole of the 90 degree joining plate is not going to attach to a T-nut. So the only holes that will be attached to the T-nuts are these top two holes. So let's go ahead and insert our screws. Once again, these are 10 millimeter screws. And I'm just going to tighten down one of the screws to keep it into position, but this position will also change. Next, we are going to take one of our M5 T-nuts and slide it into this track here. And this is going to attach to our top positioned 90 degree joining plate. So go ahead and slide that into position here. And with an M5 10 millimeter screw, go ahead and fasten that into place. Once again, this 90 degree joining plate, the only screws that will be attached onto this C-beam will be these two screws. So don't concern yourself with the three additional holes left over. This will be for attaching to our Y axis. So just leave it as it is. And let's go ahead and mirror the same process on the other side. So once again, let's add five M5 T-nuts to this track here. Adjusting the position accordingly. Remember our bottom 90 degree joining plate will only be attaching to two M5 T-nuts. Our additional three will be for the top position 90 degree joining plate. And the reason we know this is because our three hole joining plates are at the top of the C-beam. So let's go ahead and take our 90 degree joining plate, making sure that it's mirroring the other side. So you want that, that slope of the 90 degree joining plate to be facing towards the bottom of the C-beam. Once again, taking your 10 millimeter screws, let's go ahead and tighten these down to our T-nuts. And I'll just tighten down that center screw here. And let's turn our attention to these two T-nuts. Once again, making sure our 90 degree joining plate is in the right orientation. The slope should be facing the slope of this 90 degree joining plate. And we are just going to be attaching the T-nuts to these two holes. Let's go ahead and attach that with your 10 millimeter screws. So now that we have our 90 degree joining plate in place, let's go ahead and slide in our additional T-nut that's going to mount to this hole here of the 90 degree joining plate. Let's go ahead and slide in one T-nut here. Align it to the position and use your 10 millimeter screw to mount it into place. So just keep in mind the 90 degree joining plates will change in position. So just Tighten down one screw and save yourself some trouble of loosening all these screws to adjust the position. So let's go ahead and rotate the C-beam to its back. And on these two channels, we are going to insert two T-nuts per channel. So go ahead and run two T-nuts on each side. And this is for the purpose of mounting our cast corner connectors. So, just spacing these out, I'm going to attach my cast corners, making sure that the orientation of the cast corner as as I describe, these will need to be facing in this direction. So go ahead and attach your eight millimeter screws. And once again, your second cast corner, making sure that it's facing in this direction. So you can tell your indicator here is your three hole joining plate. And I'm just going to bring these down slightly. And then tighten those down. And this will be for the assembly of our Z axis. So this is going to mount to that additional small piece of C-beam from underneath with self-tapping screws. Just give yourself some room to work with here. So on the opposite side of the C-beam, you'll see two more T-nuts. We are going to attach our cast corners to these T-nuts and this orientation. So you should just have that flat platform facing towards the bottom of the C-beam. Let's go ahead and grab our eight millimeter screws and place them into the T-nuts. And what I'm gonna do with these is just uh, keep them towards the bottom. Okay, so once we finish this step, let's go ahead and move forward.
Okay, so on this next step, we are going to be attaching our 250 millimeter assembly that we've attached all our framing components to, to our Z-axis. So go ahead and bring in your Z-axis assembly and your framing assembly. In addition to that, we'll need two self-tapping screws, two M5 T-nuts, our power drill, and an M5 ball driver. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and turn this assembly to the back end here. So on these top two holes of the smaller piece of C-beam that's attached to our Z-axis, we're going to attach our three hole joining plates that are on the top piece of this frame assembly. So taking the piece here, you'll see that it aligns to the top portion. And from there, we're gonna attach our self-tapping screws. So in addition to that, if you have any issues with your cast corners in the way, all you have to do is loosen those screws and slide them down slightly. So let's go ahead and get started. So adjusting the orientation of this assembly, I've placed my frame assembly here on the back end of the Z axis. And I have access to both of these holes that we are going to be inserting the self-tapping screws to. So let's go ahead and grab one of the self-tapping screws and secure this into place. So make sure that you're pressing tightly against these two pieces of C-beam to ensure a secure flush mount to one another. So taking the power drill, simply going to press in and thread this in. Okay, so that's one done. Let's go ahead and move on to the second. And just make sure that each one of these screws are tight. And that's the end result. So we have our self-tapping screws in place. So let's go ahead and move forward. So now we need to move on to the adjustment of our 90 degree joining plates here for the top portion of our frame assembly. So on each side, you'll see your 90 degree joining plates. What we need to do now is insert T-nuts on each side of the smallest piece of C-beam and align our 90 degree joining plate with our three hole joining plate. So here on the bottom portion of the smallest piece of C-beam that's in between these two, these two pieces of C-beam here for the assembly, you'll see that we have our cast corner, which is slightly in the way. So we're gonna push that back and add our T-nut. So one of the M5 T-nuts, we're just gonna slide it into this track. And then we're gonna loosen our 90 degree joining plate and adjust the position to align with our three hole joining plate here. So just loosen those screws and slide that 90 degree joining plate into place here. Now what I like to do is align the top edge of the 90 degree joining plate with the three hole joining plate. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is tighten down each one of these screws here on the 90 degree joining plate. And I'm not tightening them completely because I still wanna make an adjustment here to the three hole joining plate. If you look closely, you'll see that we have space in between the 90 degree joining plate and the three hole. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and loosen my three hole joining plate and just push it in to where it's a flush mount against that 90 degree joining plate. You'll see we have wiggle room here. So just go ahead and align that and tighten down those screws. So now let's go ahead and tighten down our M5 T-nut. So using one of our M5 10 millimeter screws, I'm going to tighten this T-nut down. And next I'm going to tighten down all of these screws here. Okay, once you have this side complete, let's go ahead and rotate the machine. And let's do our second side. So once again, loosening these screws here on the 90 degree joining plate. Let's go ahead and slide this into position. Once again, aligning these two top edges and let's tighten down these screws. Once again, I'm not tightening them down completely because I still want to make that adjustment to my three hole joining plate if it's necessary. As you can see here, I actually don't have a gap in between the two plates. So that mount looks good. But let's go ahead and insert our T-nut first and tighten this additional hole down. So let's go ahead and move this cast corner out of the way. Slide in an M5 T-nut. 
and tighten it down with your N5 10 millimeter screw. Okay, so now I'm just going to tighten down these additional screws. Since the position here of the three hole joining plate and the 90 degree joining plate are connecting, that looks perfect. So let's go ahead and tighten down these additional screws. If not, just make those adjustments to these three holes and push it in, tighten it down, and follow suit with these three screws. So another thing I would really like to point out is in between the C-beam and the midpoint C-beam here, which is the smallest piece, you'll see a slight gap. So we don't want that. So what I'm going to do is loosen these three screws on the 90 degree joining plate and also on the three hole joining plate and squeeze the system together and then tighten it down. That way I don't have a gap in between and the system stays really rigid. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that adjustment real quick. So while squeezing the system down, making sure that those plates are touching, I'm then going to tighten these screws back down. Okay, rotating the piece around. Again, squeezing the system together. Go ahead and tighten those screws down. Okay, that looks good. So now that we have that part of the assembly complete, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So moving forward here to the next step, we are going to be attaching our self-tapping screws to our cast corners that are placed on our frame assembly. So let's go ahead and pay attention to our cast corners here on the top portion, which will be attaching to the smallest piece of C-beam here in between the Z-axis and our frame. So what I've done here is loosened each screw on the cast corner, slid it up to this piece of C-beam, and I'm going to use the self-tapping screws to mount these into place. So taking one of the self-tapping screws and your power drill, let's go ahead and attach this left cast corner. And you'll notice that you have interference with the cast corners on the bottom end. One thing you can do is just go ahead and loosen these screws and pull them right out. And then we'll insert them at the end of this step. That way we can get full access with our power drill. Another thing you can do is just back out and back in until you get that secure mount. So we have the left one connected. Go ahead and tighten down our additional screw here. And let's move on to the right side. Once you have that cast corner in place, go ahead and tighten down your additional screw. And next, let's go ahead and put our cast corners back into place, making sure that they're in the right orientation. Okay, so now that we have that assembly complete, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so moving on to the next step here, we are going to be assembling the frame to our XY table. So we have six 10 millimeter screws and two eight millimeter screws that we'll be using in the step. As you can see, I've brought in both my assemblies here. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we need to do is make sure that all of our T-nuts are down to the end by the motor. So this will be the back of the machine. So you can see I have all three of my T-nuts and our top T-nut on this slot all pushed down. And that's for the mounting of our 90 degree joining plates. So on both sides, this is what you should see. So let's go ahead and bring in our frame. As you can see, the 90 degree joining plate here, we can move freely once we loosen these screws. And what I'm doing now is sliding this into position to find out how far I need to adjust this 90 degree joining plate. So cracking these two screws loose, I'm going to slide down the joining plate until it aligns with this top slot where my T-nuts are. And just tighten that down to make sure that this doesn't move. The next thing that I'm going to do is bringing the frame back in, I'm going to align my T-nuts to these three holes. Just so we can save ourselves some trouble once we try to assemble this to our Y-axis. So I'm just adjusting this T-nuts accordingly. And that way it's just an easier assembly there. So that looks good. So let's go ahead and do the same thing on the opposite side. So once again, bringing the frame back in, 
Let's go ahead and make the adjustment to our 90 degree joining plate first. Bringing that down into position to that top slot. So just tightening that one screw here to ensure my plate doesn't move. From there, bring it upright. And let's make that adjustment to our T-nuts. Okay, so bringing the frame assembly back in here, let's go ahead and align it into position. And let's tighten down this right side of the machine first. So go ahead and grab your 10 millimeter screws and let's tighten that down to our T-nuts. If you find you have any issues with these screws or the plate aligning, just loosen that one screw and find that position that you need. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my T-nut as a reference here and align my other two. Go ahead and tighten down that screw once more. And insert your additional 10 millimeter screws. All right, and backing off of those slightly, just wanna make sure that I have a square mount here on my C-beam to Y assembly. Once I have made those adjustments, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten down all of these screws. Okay, once that's complete, let's go ahead and rotate the machine around and do the opposite side. Okay, so cracking these screws loose here, making that adjustment to the plate. Let's go ahead and tighten down the screws once you've found the square position. So basically what I'm using for reference is my C-beam in mount here, making sure that it's in line, and also the frame itself. Okay, so now that our 90 degree joining plates are in place, let's go ahead and move on to our cast corners. So next, moving your Y-axis gantry out of the way, just using the jog knob here. That way we can access our cast corners. Next, we are going to crack open each one of these screws and lower our cast corners to the mounting position. So as you can see, we now have our cast corners in position. So the next thing we need to do is go ahead and slide out our T-nuts so we can mount these into place. So one easy way to do that is just go ahead and tilt the machine up. So sliding these T-nuts into position here, let's go ahead and use our eight millimeter screws to mount these into place. So the cool thing about these ball drivers is since they have this, this ball drive at the end, it allows you to get into that screw at an angle. So that's what I'm gonna do here. All right, making sure those are nice and tight, let's go ahead and tighten down our additional screws here on the top end of the cast corner. Okay, so that completes the mechanical portion of the mini mill build. And as you can see, this machine came out great. So make sure to stay tuned for the wiring portion of the mini mill. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and dream it, build it, share it.